If you think it's bad here in the United States of America, one of our oldest, strongest, and most dedicated allies and, and key to the fight against the Chinese Communist Party, particularly around the South China Sea, Australia. I want to go there now to South Australia, Senator Alex Antic. Senator, wh- tell me, where are you right now? Well, Steve, under normal circumstances, I'd be going out for a round of golf because this is a lovely hotel. But in Australia at the moment, this is what we call a MIDI hotel. It's ostensibly a detention facility. It's a detention facility with a metal gate around it downstairs, and it's a detention facility uh, with police guards. And uh, uh, I've been put here. I've been put here uh, under order of uh, unelected health bureaucracy in this state, Um, a health bureaucracy which uh, has uh, now got unrivaled powers to do almost anything it can to almost anyone. Uh, And uh, it's a very worrying time in my country, Steve. Hold on, hang on, hang on. You're a a state senator from South Australia. Why are you... We keep hearing and seeing these videos. We keep hearing these stories. But they're almost too too much to comprehend. What are you doing and what did you do to get put into detention? (laughs) Well, it's a very good question. Look, I'll give you some history to this. Um, Australia has had a... Um, a strong COVID uh, response. There's been uh, almost a drift into authoritarianism in parts of the country. States like Victoria, which uh, you've probably seen most of those scenes from police firing rubber bullets, uh, old women being pepper sprayed, strike breaking type tactics, and people locked in their homes for almost 280 days. Melbourne is now the longest lockdown city in the world. uh, And really the COVID response hasn't been that good. here in South Australia, we've had a limited uh, COVID outbreak, but we've done so because we've we've given away a lot of our liberties and our freedoms to our unelected bureaucrats. And I've been a strong opponent of that. I've been a strong opponent of that, particularly for the last six months. Now, I travel to Canberra, which is our Washington, uh, and I, uh, I do that for my work. I'm a federally elected uh, senator, or elected senator in the federal parliament of Australia. Um, under normal circumstances, I've been traveling backwards and forwards. Uh, and, you know, sometimes they ask us to quarantine for a short amount of time in our homes. Uh, on the last occasion, following a spate, a particularly large spate of criticism from me uh, as to the, uh, the conduct of uh, the health bureaucrats here, uh, I found myself confronted by cameras at the airport. Uh, journalists had been tipped off uh, and I was escorted into this very facility that we're in now, uh, where I've been told to stay for 14 days, despite having three negative COVID tests. Uh, and so, you know, you really can't draw any other conclusions other than uh, the media were tipped off and, and they're looking to make an example of people. And the message is very clear. Um, I shouldn't be treated any different to anyone else. But if they can do this to me, they can do it to anyone, Steve. Hold, hang on, hang on. I don't, this is what I don't think people understand. You, you got off a plane. You didn't have COVID. You didn't have symptoms of COVID. They sent you to a detention center. You've tested three separate times. They've tested you. These are not self-tests, right? They've tested you three times, no COVID. Correct. And, and Correct. Why, why were you put into a detention center, and why are you still in a detention center? Well, the way it works at the moment, Steve, is we've got border restrictions in, uh, in this country. We've got border restrictions which require you, get this, see if you can get your head around this one, to apply to come back to your home state to, to, to come home effectively to your, your family and friends. Um, now, there are certain conditions on that. They change every time. Uh, in many respects, they ask you all sorts of questions, like whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, uh, and all sorts of personal questions. And then they make a determination based on that information as to whether you can come home. I was initially denied access to come home multiple times and had to seek an exemption in order to get the privilege of being locked up in my home state. I'm, I'm around about three miles, two and a half miles from my uh, from my home where I live at the moment. But uh, despite all of the above, uh, I've been uh, I've been put in here. It's been quite a media story in this state, I think, for 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 reason, you know, for reason of making the point. Uh, And, um, you know, I think the message is clear. I've been poking around the health department. I've been seeking documents about providing medical advice. Uh, You know, why is it that this state is locking people down? You see, Uh, We're in the grip of an expanding vaccine mandate program in this state. We've got teachers and doctors and nurses all being forced to get vaccinated or lose their jobs. Um, And here we are. It's it's, it's hard to know why, but, you know, I think you can join the dots. Senator, and by the way, you're you're a federally elected (laughs) senator from South Australia. Here's what I think. It's hard for people in America to get 
their hands around. People either been to Australia or been to Asia and hung out with Australians or had Australians come here or have friends or Australians. You're among the most practical, common sense people on earth. What happened? I mean, what's so shocking is that nobody could figure out. Somebody, you know, maybe in Germany or somebody, you know, these guys get a little crazy sometimes. Australia is the salt of the earth. You're <laughs> like the best guys. You're always there with us. You're all, you know, you're always shoulder to shoulder. That's why you're such a great ally against the CCP. And people look at these videos and hear your story. What happened? What, what, what is going on in Australia? And what is it about this leadership or this elite about these draconian measures they're putting in without any backup of evidence, data, or science. Well, I think, and that's quite right. And I think you've, you've touched on a couple of points there, Steve. If you go back to the history of Australia and you compare it and contrast it to the history of the United States, we, we weren't born out of war. We weren't born out of a revolutionary war like you guys were. We were born uh, as a penal colony. Uh, and we were effectively a colony for the British government to send prisoners that they didn't know what else to do with. So they sent them here. And that's how Australia was born. Um, in many ways, I've heard it argued, and I think I'd agree, that we've come full circle. We're now almost back to that in many respects. And the Australian psyche is quite different to the American psyche. As you say, we're very laid back. Um, I think Australians are more trusting of their government than people in the United States are, in this instance, probably to our detriment. Um, and they simply did what they were told, um, including our parliamentarians, who gifted the most extraordinary powers to the bureaucracy in this country. Um, you know, in Victoria at the moment, they have passed the most illiberal um, act of parliament, which now affords the Premier of Victoria almost unilateral powers to do whatever he wants for however he wants. It's the sort of stuff that you'd see coming out of the Politburo in China. Um, and Australians have protested in pretty large numbers, increasing numbers. But if this was happening in the United States, it, there would be mayhem and chaos everywhere. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm just saying that's what would happen. So the Australian psyche is quite different. And the Australia of today has become much different to the Australia of even in the 80s. You would have seen those ads with Paul Hogan, uh, you know, out on a boat on the Sydney Harbour throwing a shrimp on the barbie. Well, I'm sad to say, Steve, that we have in this country, I think, in many respects, sacrificed liberty at the altar of COVID paranoia. And uh, it's hard to know exactly why and where, but we have to wind these powers back quickly because it's damaging Australia. Uh, it's dividing our country. We've got family member after uh, against family member based on, uh, you know, the science of COVID or the not science of COVID vaccine mandates, no vaccine mandates. And it is putting a great big wedge down this country. Senator, has has the government in Melbourne or any of the governments shown any evidence, data, results, anything that shows that their draconian measures of lockdowns and mandates has have any positive effect on where this virus or pandemic should can they point to any of their draconian measures that have worked well look steve no they can't and in fact the data out of melbourne suggests that it actually is almost counterproductive um, you know there's an argument that i mean you take the example for me here today a perfectly healthy person has been taken and put into a, a hotel with circulated air conditioning which you can see behind me uh where there probably is COVID somewhere in this building where i could have gone home where there was no COVID. Um, so there really is no data. In fact, it's being shown. But the irony of this is, Steve, this is the very data that I was looking for from our health bureaucrats um, a month or so ago uh, prior to being detained in this manner. Uh, and in fact, I scaled that up uh, to a higher authority, uh, one of our ombudsmen here, a week before being detained. And then I was greeted at the airport by, uh, by police to uh, detain me into a Medi Hotel situation. Um, Australia's in a dark place, Steve. I think it's still, the community still hasn't, for the laid back reasons I talked about, still hasn't entirely picked the thread up on this, but we are seeing record numbers of people on our streets at the moment. We've had something like 1.2, 1.3 million people on the streets over the last two or three weeks in all across the country, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide. Now, they don't sound like big numbers in United States terms, but in Australia, we haven't seen that arguably ever, uh, and certainly not since the Vietnam War. So this is a matter that the, the political class is missing and it needs to pick up on quickly. Senator Anik, what, what do you intend to do to, to, to fight this? And what's the path forward for, uh, for well, Australia looks, and particularly for Australians that love freedom and liberty? Look, Steve, the first thing is we have to keep talking about it. We, we just have to keep speaking about it. I mean, there, there's a very mixed sentiment in this country at the moment. I've done some polling out of my own office and it shows that in this state, around about 50% of people think that it is okay for somebody to lose their job if they refuse to take the COVID vaccine. Now, that's incredibly alarming to me. I think the public zeitgeist, if you like, out there hasn't hasn't quite 
uh, necessarily picked up on the thread of this, but we've got to keep talking about it. Um, people like myself have to keep talking to our colleagues about winding back these COVID powers. Um, the, these are all acts of parliament. They are all acts of parliament from individual states. Our state premiers are like your governors. Um, and in each state, they have gifted power to effectively the public service, the bureaucracy, if you like. That has to stop. And we have to do what I've been describing, a liberty audit, which is every single power that was gifted needs to be returned. And that is far-fetched and fanciful thinking because we know what happens when the unelected get hold of power, Steve, and the government gets into your life. They never let go. But it's up to people like myself and it's up to good people to get into politics. We need to, we need to drain the billabong in this country, Steve. It's as simple as that. Um, and Australia, America can learn a lot of lessons from, uh, from what's happening in Australia. We need a strong America. We need an America as our strongest ally uh, and partner against uh, regional threats like you've described. And we need America to stay free. We need America to stay democratic and, uh, and to push back and help us through these times. Uh, Senator, how do people follow you on social media? Because this story, we want to make sure everybody in the world's following the story. You've got about 30 seconds. How do people follow you? I, look, I, I'm shamefully, I only use Facebook at this stage, uh, Steve, but I'm Senator Alex Antic, A-N-T-I-C, on Facebook. And uh, uh, that's the best place to follow me at this stage, although I may, uh, I've may i been following your Getter accounts and that sort of thing, so I might drift off into that at some stage soon. We're going to get you up on Getter. You gotta, this story's got to be known to the world, and you can't depend upon uh, Zuckerberg to see it. Senator Antic, you're a hero. A lot of people have your back. We're going to make sure everybody knows the story. It's outrageous, shocking, and... Uh, all the rest of it. Senator Antic from South Australia, thank you very much for joining us. Alex Antic from South Australia, thank you for joining us in the war room. Appreciate it. Thanks, Steve.